trending us now is OG, Ojinika, Genex, Ope. With stories trending around the world. Hello, Genex. Okay, both, well of, you, done. both of you got <laughs> the number today. We did. We got the Only ad. because of what we did yesterday. I had to, I had to try it out. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I gave you the memo yesterday, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, you gave it to the paper today. Yeah. No, well, this one is telepathy. Telepathy oh, okay. between us, right? Ah, no, 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 Not so, Jineka. <laughs> yes. Good morning, Rufai. Good morning, We are still missing Tundu oh, today. Yes. All right, all right. Good morning to you, viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United Kingdom, Prince William and Prince Harry put aside their differences to appear together on Thursday to unveil a statue honoring their late mother, Diana, Princess of Wales, in the sunken garden of Kensington Palace. The statue, which was originally commissioned in 2017, on the 20th anniversary of her death, was revealed in a ceremony on what would have been Diana's 60th birthday. In the United States, New York prosecutors on Thursday charged the Trump Organization and its chief financial officer, Alan Weiselberg, with a 15-year alleged tax scheme that marked the first criminal case against the former president's namesake company. Then, 12-year-old Abhim Manu Mishra has set a new world record. On Wednesday, the New Jersey native beat Hungarian Sergei Kartigan's record of 12 years and 7 months to become the youngest grandmaster in chess history at the age of 12 years, four months, and 25 days. In Canada, reactions thrill another mass grave of 182 children discovered by a community near a former boarding school for indigenous children. It's the latest of such discovery in recent weeks. In China, the ruling Communist Party kicked off a tightly choreographed ceremony celebrating its 100th anniversary on Thursday with a 100-gun salute as thousands of performers assembled on Tiananmen Square. In Nigeria, a lawsuit seeking the winding up and forfeiture of CNN Africa's assets for alleged breach of the company's and Allied Matters Act among others, that requires an entity to register its company in the country is set for hearing on September 27th. Under sports, Juventus forward Cristiano Ronaldo on Thursday topped Instagram's rich list for the first time as the celebrity that could charge more than anyone else for a sponsored post. According to social media marketing firm Hoopa HQ, Ronaldo can charge advertisers up to $1.6 million per post on his account. Finally, under entertainment, following Britney Spears' conservatorship battle, Bessema Trust, the wealth management firm that was set to become the co-conservator of the star's $60 million fortune, in a twist of events, pulled out on Thursday after the pop singer told the court that the arrangement was abusive and claimed irreparable damage to high interests. Well, let's begin what's trending in Nigeria with reactions to the raid of the residents belonging to Yoruba activist Sunday Adeyemo, popularly known as Sunday Igboho in Oyo State. Well, the Department of State Services on Thursday launched a manhunt for the activists after gathering intelligence that the youth leader had stockpiled arms at his residence in Oyo State. The spokesman for the DSS, Peter Afunaya, said the security agency recovered illegal arms, including seven AK-47 rifles and thousands of ammunition from the residents. The DSS also confirmed that Igboho escaped arrest during the raid, and two people were killed after a gun battle ensued between the security agency and Igboho's supporters. The Yoruba youth leader has been agitating for a creation of the Yoruba nation and had planned to hold a rally in Lagos on Saturday to drive home his secessionist objective. Dr. Bati Rufai, oh. if you would recall, when I brought the story on Monday, I, you know, I expressed some apprehension because oh. of the possible aftermath that may you know, come after the rally. But then the Lagos State Police Command had issued a statement warning against the agitation that was supposed to happen in Lagos on Saturday. Well, I'm glad that it, it will not happen in Lagos uh, on Saturday because of this. I mean, but then the issue is Nigerians are talking about the fact that the federal government is going after 
agitators of secession instead of the terrorists that have been causing mayhem and the insecurity issues in Nigeria. I'll take a tweet from a Dr. Deepo Awojide who wrote, if the government continues to chase people like Namdi Kanu and Sunday Igboho, but negotiate with bandits and terrorists from northern Nigeria, people will ask questions. Representatives of Meetiala don't get this sort of treatment. Treat everyone equally. I'll throw it to you. I mean, those are valid concerns. Uh, when I saw the story come out of all of this, I look and I said, was Sunday Igboho invited first by the DSS? Was he? Before the arrest? Is this the or? best approach? Okay. You know, you go in there, destroy and vandalize somebody's property? We keep saying the state, yes, but let's not forget section 14, subsection A, I mean, subsection 2A says the state derives its sovereignty from the people. And these are people, human beings, citizens of this country, too. And when you now translate it to the grand argument, of the fact that people that have fought the Nigerian state for over 10 years have not been given treatment like this. That's why a lot of people are shouting on the streets. They've not been given treatments like this. Take for instance, it was in this country. They told us they had killed Shekau. Shekau resurrected again. They had killed Shekau. He resurrected again. It is in this country we have people come to defend bandits. It is in this country that a governor of a state was almost killed and a group raised a statement and said they were the ones that almost killed the governor of the state, Benway State, and nothing was done. We didn't find that group out. But we are so quick to do this. So it is obvious that the state can actually clamp down on terrorists and bandits. That's they should do it. And let me dial back a bit. We keep talking about these agitations. What is the cause? Anywhere you find injustice, you have agitations. Before IPOB, we forget in a hurry there was mass up. Before mass up, we forget in a hurry there was an Isaac Adakaburu. Mm. We forget these things in a hurry. And where there's seeming injustice, what the government should do should be the balancer here. If there's any word like that, should be the one to balance every part and ensure that there is justice and development across board. To have conversations. What are these conversations? Conversations on the reform of the Constitution. A lot of people are saying, we want to go back to 63 approach, where the regions had autonomy, run their own areas. That's what they are saying. Then the government should listen and have these conversations. The government is quick to say, OK, go to the National Assembly. A lot of people are saying, the National Assembly will not do our bidding, will not listen to us properly. So let's have a sovereign national conference. That's what people are saying. Things like that, the government should come out and debate the merits with the people. In America, till today, we still read the Federalist Papers. Why did the Federalist Papers come about? Some people were against the federal constitution in America. And the likes of Alexander Hamilton and co. wanted the federal constitution. So they debated it, and a bunch of those essays became what these Federalist Papers are. Right. So we are not having conversations. We are not talking. The next thing we say, violence. This is not the way to go as a country. But what has been demonstrated by the state, qua state, is that, look, the state has a monopolistic control, more or less, over violence. And that anybody that challenges the state, particularly if you are a non-state actor, the will of the state may be slow. I said it earlier. But at the end of the day, the state would assert itself. And where national security is involved, the state, again, hides under Section 14, Subsection 2 of the Constitution, which says that the security and the welfare of the people is a primary responsibility of government. So government will say, well, we have a responsibility to provide, to protect your welfare, but at the same time, to also make sure that the state is secure, is safe for the benefit of the people, and that no non-state actor can overwhelm the state. Now, both in the case of uh, Namde Kano and that of uh, Sunday Bo, what the state has just done clearly is to assert itself. And it seems to me, again, that m many Nigerians will remember that previously, the president had made it clear that very soon the Nigerian government will speak to certain actors, non-state actors within Nigeria, in the language that they will understand. And I'm not shocked that some spokespersons within government have been saying, now, this is the language that they will understand. 
So the state has asserted itself, but the question to ask is, has the state done so in a just manner under the rule of law? And which was why, with regard to Nam de Kano, we were posing the question, yes. we were interrogating the question about, okay, is this, does this raise the question of extraordinary rendition, even if Kano himself is a fugitive from the law? Okay, has the state gone about it in the right manner? And that's why some people have raised questions. In the case of uh, Igbo, the state attacked his residence based on the information that he, he, he was stockpiling arms. Okay, what has been done? Has it gone through due process? Yes, Igbo, we are told, was invited before. He did not go. Uh, at another time, some security agents tried to attack him on the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Uh, they claimed innocence in the matter. But now, we have this incident, the attack on his house. And the question I raise is, was he invited and he resisted you know, the invitation? He didn't show up. I think the DSS will still have to offer us explanation in that regard. Because yes, you may be preventing non-state actors from overwhelming the state, but you also still have to do it within the framework of law. Right. It's not enough to just hide under, uh, we're ensuring national security. National security sometimes can be nebulous, can be overextended. There must be respect for fundamental human rights. Now, they went into the house, uh, they've given an account of the things that they took from Igbo's house. Now, does that, should that also have included extrajudicial murder? There was one uh, uh, woman that they said uh, was, uh, you know, uh, uh, taken away. Uh, there was uh, one man, one alpha, that was praying, that they said was killed. Was the alpha involved in this confrontation, this pushback right. that they said they experienced? So we don't have enough details yet, and that is why you see that the questions are legitimate about how the state itself, in defending its own interests, must operate within the purview of the law. I raised the question earlier that uh, uh, Igbo's cats are missing. <laughs> so, you know, uh, Dr. Afunaya did not give account of those cats. Some reports have said uh, uh, Igbo's wife is also missing. But they I didn't give an account Batty, about whether his wife is with state uh, services or not. So we need more information. But does it, the, but, the one thing is clear, Dr. Bati, is that yes. there was a gun battle. What is the excuse for the gun battle? Did they just no, go they in No, they said they were shoot? resisted by security that, people in the, the residence. Question. And so why, they also fought why? back. Why did they have to do that? What was the purpose of that? This it it are, sounds like some mafia movie or something. No, if, it, if security operatives invade your home, they have an arrest warrant, what you have to do is just, you know, no, they've not down told us they went there with an arrest warrant. Or, maybe, or a maybe, search warrant. Maybe, maybe a search warrant or, a, or whatever. But yeah. they, are, they, they, they are. They the did DSS. not say so. They have not said so. Right. So all of those questions must be addressed. Right. This right. is the point. All right. Well, I guess okay. we'll have to uh, go on a short break before we yeah. take another story. And when we come back, what's trending on the morning show will continue. Stay with us. Welcome back to the morning show. The House of Representatives on Thursday was thrown into a rowdy session after members rejected a motion to lift the indefinite suspension of the operations of Twitter in Nigeria. Following Twitter's suspension in the country, the Green Chamber mandated four of its committee to summon Lai Mohammed, Minister of Information and Culture, to explain the ban. The minister claimed that operations of Twitter in the country was not legally permissible when he appeared before the panel on June 22nd. On Thursday, this session became rowdy when the Deputy Speaker of the House and Chairman of the Committee of the Whole, Idris Wasi, suggested that the National Security Advisor, Major General Babagana Monguno, was not invited to participate in the investigative hearing, while the Speaker of the House, Femi Baja Bamila, while contributing to the motion, said the reasons Twitter was banned had already been addressed by the Minister of Information and Culture. Well, I mean, it feels like a whole, <laughs> the whole, oh, yeah, I'll tell you in another development yeah. though, uh, Russian uh, President Vladimir Putin on Thursday signed a new law that mandates foreign tech companies, including social media giants, Facebook and Twitter, to open physical offices in the country. I was trying to explain to you that it's like a whole climb I mean, down. I, mean, I don't whole, understand what the house I, of... I'm, I'm, I mean, it's a whole gamut. But we can't compare ourselves with Putin. Putin is a dictator. Let's call him what he is. He's a dictator. He's an ex-KGB official. He's a dictator. Putin wants the Soviet Union to continue. 
In fact, when they broke up the Soviet Union, he was a KGB official in Germany. He was posted in Germany. And there were copious accounts of Putin saying, I will bring back the Soviet Union. And that's what he's trying to do. That's why annexation of Crimea, fighting Ukraine and dominance and all of that. And the West is his problem. And he's got nuclear weapons. So anything that smacks of the West, Putin will try to clamp down. So I'm not surprised Putin will say, uh, Facebook and Nascom are open offices in Russia. Let's go back to Twitter. It still goes back to the right of people for free speech. You have said this about Twitter. You say you are negotiating with Twitter. How fast is the negotiation going? We have not seen the root of all of this matter. OK, a lot of people are arguing now. That's OK. You say, oh, it's not about the president's speech. It's about national security. But it's obvious that days have gone by and nothing has been done. Then the next thing, they went ahead, they shopped for the fact that Twitter is not paying taxes in Nigeria. The question again, we've been able to put out the numbers to them, that how much is really Twitter making? Even in the UK, that is a developed economy, the Twitter, Twitter doesn't pay up to 1.2 or 3 million pounds sterling in taxes yearly. So it's not that they are making a lot of money. Then the next thing, you say, okay, they don't have offices here, we want to make them pay. When you go through all this garbage, one thing you will do is you will scare away tech investors that can actually bring money into our economy. Number one. Number two, you render a lot of young people redundant that have used this platform to be able to make money. Number three, you are impoverishing more people. And fourthly, let's remember, the state is constant. But power, or whoever is in charge of the state, is transient. Let's remember, you are there right. today. You will not be there some other day. Let's always remember well, that. I was going to say before mm. we uh, conclude that it, it does appear that there is a worldwide clampdown on these tech companies at this point. Which I is mean, the that's fundamental the question. Right. The fundamental question is as follows. Now, what the world is facing now with the rise of technology is what is appearing to be the dominance, the preeminence right. of the uh, tech giants and also what appears to be the, the dictatorship Correct. of the social media. And many countries are now saying, look, this is not something that we can allow to develop just on its own. Mm -hmm. Either from the perspective of uh, antitrust, competition laws, and all of that, or from uh, the attempt by the countries to assert some kind of rule, control. And that's what we have seen in India. That's what we have seen in Europe, right. in the whole of Europe. That's also what we have seen in the United States. And now the latest examples that you have brought is Russia. Russia. And Russia is saying that, look, these tech companies that have uh, these social media giants, particularly Facebook, that attract up to 500,000 users per day would have to have an office okay. and would have, Putin says, to abide by national laws Correct. and also cooperate with us yes. without any prejudice to the right of the people to use that uh, platform. And is that not the same thing we're dealing with in, in, Nigeria. The, in Nigeria? Which is like, okay, these uh, tech uh, giants, these social media companies, can they operate without regard for national laws? That's the question. Yeah. And that is the question again at the House of Rep session uh, yesterday in the uh, uh, in, in Abuja, which you also brought up. Mm -hmm. You recall that it was uh, one guy called Tobi Ukechuku. Yes. In, before now, the uh, House had set up a committee to go and look at the, the uh, issue and report back. Mm -hmm. Now, Tobi Ukechuku, as deputy minority leader, was upholding the position of the minority caucus yes. in the House. Yes. Because in early June, when the Nigerian government took that decision, that minority caucus had dismissed you know, what the federal government did as arbitrary and obnoxious and vexatious. Mm -hmm. So he was being consistent. So he raised a motion. Somebody supported it. But at the end of the day, when it was put to a vote, the majority said no. no. What did he want? He was making the point about how the suspension of Twitter in Nigeria is affecting businesses. Which is the and that the suspension at this point and that the suspension yeah. should be lifted. Right. But the other party who carried the, the, the day then said no. The Nigerian government is still talking to Twitter. That's a decision that will be taken. The executive, you know, had already uh, given certain conditions. How far do you go with that? But beyond all the details, I think in many countries, you know, the fear is about the dictatorship of the tech giants and how that can affect national jurisdictions. Right. You may disagree and say countries cannot control 
uh, tech giants, and national laws are not important. But that will be a jurisprudential issue in uh, many countries. Well, I hope that at the end of it, everything will all be for the benefit of human, human beings to be able to express themselves, because that's really what the fight is about, okay. the freedom of expression. If you are trying to, you know, I, I do support the fact that the tech giants to find a way to, you know, people should make money with the tech giants in each country. But yeah, if you but are going to- Where do you draw the line? Well, it's, because it's, there are no absolute rights. Okay, okay, if we go into jurisprudence, if we talk about freedom of expression, yeah. freedom of speech, okay, what do you, uh, the positivists will tell you is that yes, you are entitled to those rights, but those rights are not absolute. And that the state also has a responsibility, you know, to define uh, within its structures when you deviate in terms of your expression of those fundamental um, rights. Quick point, quickly. What I just want just to say is this. You see, tech is another ballgame entirely. And the problem is a lot of even these lawmakers don't know tech, don't understand tech. When it comes to tech, you don't really have boundaries. And I'll give you an instance. Yahoo doesn't need to come and open an office in Nigeria, but use Yahoo Mail sometimes or use Gmail. But if they have an office, you might make more no, money as a country. But the truth but is, that, no, no, the point. truth is, the truth is, the reason for tech is to break those barriers. Right. And that's why when you see, see. blockchain, cryptocurrency, is to be able to break those barriers and increase the frontiers of unity around the world. See you see, too. the conversation a lot of countries should be having is regulations. You know, how can we regulate? Well, how can we... That is the conversation No, 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 right no, 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 no. That you is see, the conversation. The conversation a lot of countries are having now is cancel culture. <laughs> No, what they are doing is fascism. <laughs> they want to take it out wholly. No, but, but in they want Russia, to, they in want Russia, to break it up. Putin is not talking about cancelling. No. No, He's no. talking about cooperation right. but, but, and about but the registration. Truth is, the truth is, Dr. Bati, read the Indian bill. <laughs> no. What India is talking of it, is no. cancellation no. of the no. government Twitter, dominating it. No, 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 no. Read the Indian bill. No, India. The Indian regulation in, uh, in uh, February, yes. uh, you know, which came into effect in... Uh, in May, he's also talking about regulation. regulation other right. other <laughs> players within that environment had already agreed. It's only Twitter that is talking about manipulate, uh, that is protesting against manipulating Which media. is wrong. So okay. there are right. two sides to we'll, it. We'll take our final story, guys, so that we can end the segment. The Sharia law enforcement outfit, Hisba police on Wednesday announced a ban on the use of mannequins to display clothes by tailors in supermarkets and boutiques in Kano State, northwest of Nigeria. According to the commander of the Kano State Hisba Board, the use of mannequins by tailors and boutique owners contravened the provision of Islamic injunctions. He added that the agency would embark on sensitization of the people to educate them on how Islam frowns on the use of mannequins while the agency will send its officials to apprehend and persecute offenders. You know why this was so important to me, funny. right? Because I am in the fashion business. How funny. can this happen, <laughs> Dr. Patti? What funny. is this all about? It's quite uh, funny. The Hisba Police Board <laughs> in uh, Kano State was yeah. established in 2003. And the Hisba, the simple meaning of it is that look to uh, <laughs> differentiate between right and wrong and uh, to function for the good of the people. And the question you will ask is, okay, yes, the Hisba Police Board, particularly in Kano State, has it been acting for the good of society? If you look at many of the recent examples, even Babas have been targeted. If you have a particular haircut and you are a young man, yes. you could get yourself into trouble. There was a particular young man that had a haircut and he was arrested by the Hisba Police. And the young man said, in fact, he didn't want to be a Muslim again. <laughs> he would stop praying. There were trucks of, uh, you know, uh, cartons of beer, beer yes. intercepted, and the beer was, uh, you know, the bottles of beer uh, were destroyed. Women have been arrested for wearing trousers, even for using eyeglasses. <laughs> and this same Isma police is supposed to work in concert with the Nigerian police. But it functions essentially as a religious police, as a moral police, and even Nigerian policemen are opposed to the Isba police, because they do not cooperate with the police. And so you have a religious police, a moral police, that is continually violating the fundamental rights of the uh, people. So the big question is about fundamental rights. But what I find curious is that many of the people whose rights are violated do not go to court. Yes, but then 
what are they going to use now for the shops? What do they expect us to do? Like put some sticks in I, and display I, clothes I, I, on the mannequin with I mean, the mannequin no, ripped we're on? Talking about I'm really, this. really, really, really. It's a shocking reality of our country. Like so well, sad. Well, you so guys sad. enjoy your weekend. That's all I have yeah, for you on what's too. trending You're today. Jamaica. And we'll see you next week. We're going to Okwane this weekend. Thank you.